Hello and welcome to uh, my lecture on advanced qualitative research methods. Once again, my name is Ibrahim Osman Adam. Uh, today is our first lecture. We've already had our introductory session previously. Uh, as part of our first lecture, we will be concentrating on defining and understanding business and management research. To do that, I am hopeful that by the end of the lecture, you should be able to understand what we mean by research. You should also be able to understand what we mean by qualitative research, the purpose of qualitative research, and what is and what the focus of qualitative research is. You should also be able to uh, place your research on a uh, on a basic applied research continue. You should be able to tell whether your the kind of research we see, the kind of research you are doing is either basic research or applied research, and what is the purpose and what is the context of your research. And then uh, finally, you should be able to understand the different stages you need to go through and revisit as part of your research process. We say you, you would be revisiting the processes or stages because research is an iterative process, especially qualitative research, so you'll be going back and forth. That's what I mean. Okay, now uh, almost all of us here may have heard of uh, the term research. If you are in this uh, class and you've not heard of the term research, then probably this is not the place you should be. I'm saying this because you would have gone through an undergraduate study and you would have done some form of research or the other. Uh, for many of us, we would uh, see research as consisting of some kind of work in a laboratory with equipments and whatnot, as seen in this picture. Others may see research as this kind of activity that involves a lot of uh, uh, bringing ideas, knowledge from different sources together. Uh, for many of us in the academia, we what we usually do in terms of research is uh, that uh, our research efforts should result into what we refer to as a publication. Whether we see research as being in a laboratory or in the field or whatever, or resulting in publications, what we need to understand is that research basically refers to uh, things we already know, uh, things we see that everybody else would know about or would have seen, but we are thinking of it in a different way. And that is where the contribution of knowledge in terms of research is very critical. So basically, we would say that research is to see what everybody else has seen. That is why we constantly say that there is nothing new under the sun. The only difference in research is that we are thinking of what everybody has seen in a different way. We are thinking of it in a different way. And that is what the addition of knowledge and research is all about. Okay. So based on this basic understanding of what research is, I would want to emphasize that when we collect facts from different sources without a purpose and we just lump it together, we cannot refer to it as research. So we say that research is not just collecting facts or information with no clear purpose. So assuming you are asked to, uh, you, you, you go online, you copy some uh, uh, information from different websites and you lump it together and give it some title or whatever, you cannot refer to it as research because you may not have a very clear purpose. Research is not also the act of reassembling and reordering facts or information without interpretation. Research always involves some form of interpretation. And in our future, uh, our subsequent uh, uh, lectures, we will try to look at the subjectivity and objectivity in terms of the interpretation of what our results and research may be. Then research is also not a term which we use to get our products or idea noticed. And respect it. That's not we we we, do, we don't refer to these three things as research. Let me go over it again. We are saying that research is not just collecting facts or information with no clear purpose. It doesn't involve reassembling and reordering facts or information without interpretation, and it is not used as a term to get your products or ideas noticed and respected. Uh, according to Walliman, he argues that many of these everyday use of the term research are not research in the actual sense of the word. And so, when we say research, what do we mean? That there are some critical characteristics of research which we need to note going forward. Research basically involves data collection 
and the data we would collect should be the, the data collection should be done in a very systematic way uh, we would have we, we went through the idea of what data is in information systems and we basically indicated that data basically refers to raw and processed facts so when we collect this raw, when we are collecting this raw and processed fact in research we must be doing it in a very what systematic way in an order and organized way uh, research one other critical feature of uh, research is that the data we get we finally get to analyze it if we're going to interpret it the interpretation should not be done in a haphazard manner it should be done in a systematic way then in all of this whether we are collecting data whether we are interpreting our results we must have a clear purpose and the clear purpose would be what to find a particular thing out to find something out okay now uh, some some th th there are certain things that people undertake in order to find things out in a, a systematic way it's many many different ways and we usually would say that if we are carrying out an activity especially in the academic sense in order to find things out and we follow, follow a systematic way in order to increase our knowledge in that particular area then we can refer to it as what as research in all of this explanation i have provided briefly so far one critical thing we must notice that there are two phrases that has been coming out which are very important the two phrases are systematic way and to find things out so we say that uh, if we are finding things out in a systematic way then it means we are uh, conducting research and when we do this in a systematic way uh, the ultimate objective will be what to increase our knowledge and when we say systematic systematic basically suggests that the research is based on what some logical relationship and not just one's belief or faith or whatever it should be based on facts and it should be done in a very systematic way so as part of this course what you will do as research will involve an explanation of the different methods you would use to collect your data the different ways you would go about collecting your data it will also involve uh, that your arguments about why the results you have obtained are meaningful or not it will also involve your explanation of any limitations that may be associated with whatever you have found and uh, let me go back a bit to say that we when we conduct research we are doing it in a systematic way to find things out finding things out suggests that there are many ways we can follow to find things out so we say that to find things out there is a suggestion that there are multiplicity of possible purposes for your research and this may include describing it explaining your results understanding criticizing and what and analyzing however it is also suggestive that when we have a clear purpose or set when we, we, we have a clear purpose or a set of things that we want to find out the clear purpose may be that we want to address a particular question or a number of questions that may be our clear uh, purpose okay so going further the question i want to ask is what is research in an academic setting research may be defined as an original investigation an original investigation undertaken in order to contribute to knowledge we are finding something out in a particular field and we are contributing to what uh, people may have known known but may not may have not thought of it in a particular way so this little addition we uh, adding to what is already existing is what we refer to as what the generation of knowledge uh, research is also a very creative activity it's a very creative activity and this creative activity should lead to the what the generation of new knowledge and ideas now the question we may ask is how do we know that the research results we uh, have produced are new how do we also know that the findings are original because we have indicated that the research we are conducting should be what an original investigation and should lead to the contribution of what new knowledge how do we know the research results are new how do we know that the findings are original and then finally how do we know that the research was conducted in a rigorous manner all of these questions hopefully will be answered at least by the end of the the course okay now going forward there are some critical terms we may need to 
uh, also understand. One of it is what we refer to as a method. So usually in research, we would come across terms such as research method. We also come across terms such as research methodology, and these two terms can be very confusing. The first one we we'll look at is research method. When we say method, basically we are referring to the techniques, the processes, the procedures one will follow to obtain, gather data, and then analyze the, the data. So it will include our use of questionnaires, our research method will include our use of questionnaires, observation, interview, as well as some other statistical or non-statistical techniques to be able to analyze our data. In contrast to what we may refer to as research methodology, the term methodology or research methodology refers to the theory of how the overall research is what is undertaken. So there's a difference between the two. Now, one question that may follow from this is why do we have to do qualitative research? The main focus of this uh, course is qualitative research. Why do we have to do qualitative research? We do qualitative research because qualitative research methods are designed to help us either as academic researchers to be able to understand people and what they do, what they say in a very critical way. Then it also allows researchers to see and understand whatever may have been said in the context within which those sayings or those actions and decisions may have been taken. So context is very important in what in qualitative research. It is a context when we say context, well, the context basically refers to what will help us to explain why someone said something in a particular way, in the manner in which he or she did. Okay? Also, by talking to people or reading what they have written in books, in articles or whatever, we can find out what they were thinking when they were writing or saying those things. So that is what qualitative, why qualitative research is very important. Qualitative research then can be said to involve the collection, the analyzation of numerical, non-numerical data to understand concepts, opinions, or experiences. When we say non-numerical, when we say qualitative research deals with non-numerical data, we are basically saying that it deals with text, it deals with video, it deals with audio, unlike quantitative research we will see in a bit soon. Qualitative research can be used to gather in-depth understanding or insight into a problem or generate new ideas for research. So for qualitative research, one can even study one individual for a very long period of time to understand how this person is behaving or acting in certain circumstances, whatever. We refer to this as qualitative. Qualitative research methods can come in different forms. And this diagram will give us an overview of what qualitative research methods may involve. It may involve case study research, which is very common to most of us. During our undergraduate studies, many of us may have stated our topic, understanding teenage pregnancy in senior high schools, a case study of Northern School of Business, a case study of WA. Basically, case studies research is a research method under what? Qualitative research. We also have what we refer to as focus goal. We can also use ethnographic research, interviews, observations, and, and whatnot. We will look at this in depth as we, as we go on. Now, in qualitative research, what sort of questions? Because we indicated somewhere that in order to generate new knowledge and conduct original investigation, in order to conduct original investigation to generate new knowledge, there, are, there may be a question we will need to answer or a number of questions we may need to answer because the research must have what? A clear purpose. And when we try to answer these questions, the purpose for which the research is set out would have been what? Achieved. So in qualitative research, we may ask questions like what is happening here. We may ask questions about why is that thing happening and how is how has it come to happen this way and then when did that thing happen. So in providing answers to all these questions, we would have to follow an original investigation in a rigorous way using qualitative research uh, methods to be able to provide answers to these questions. Now, qualitative research is different from quantitative research. The focus of qualitative research is on what? Text, video, audios. Why is the focus of what? Quantitative research is on numbers. So in qualitative research, we may use the following. Action research, case study method, ethnography, grounded theory, semiotics, discourse analysis, semantics, narrative, and metaphors. Whilst in quantitative research, we focus on numbers. We may use surveys. We can use laboratory experiments. As seen in the first picture I displayed, we also use simulation, mathematical modeling, structural equation modeling, 
other statistical or what econometric modeling techniques. Okay. So as I have already indicated, quantitative research focuses on numbers. Quantitative research is best used if one wants to generalize to a larger population. So maybe we want to find a trend in a particular uh, population or we want to find a particular pattern. We may be tempted to use what we refer to as quantitative research because that one depends on numbers and can be generalized to a large population. On the other hand, if we want to use qualitative research, our focus will be on what? Text. And the text is basically what people say. We may also have video or audio in different and other different formats of what data. So qualitative research is best if one wants to study a particular subject in detail. If you want to do that in depth, then we'll study something in depth, then we can use qualitative research. However, both quantitative and qualitative research are useful. We are not claiming dominance on qualitative research over quantitative research. Both are useful and both are very important and can be done in a very rigorous manner. Okay, in as much as uh, we are saying that both quantitative and qualitative research are useful, qualitative research is in, in the context of what we are doing now is relevant. And qualitative research allows scholarship and practice to come together in a very easy way. Qualitative research in business and management studies also uh, helps us to examine real uh, life situations and engage with people directly in, uh, in organizations. And then it's one of the ways that business research can become very relevant to organizations because of the in-depth manner in which uh, uh, qualitative research is done. Now, with the basic understanding that we have quantitative and qualitative research and we can have quantitative research methods and qualitative research methods there are instances that qualitative uh, research methods or a qualitative research methodology may be combined with what quantitative research methods or quantitative research me methodology when that happens we have what we call triangulation and the way triangulation can be said to have two meanings at least two meanings and the meanings are the first when we combine quantitative and qualitative research methods in one single study then we can say that we are triangulating we can also use two or more techniques to gather data in that case uh, we can also say that we are triangulating and the idea is that we are looking at the same thing from uh, from different angles and it is very common for qualitative researchers to use the second form of triangulation where they use two or more techniques to gather data. Uh, later on, we realize that one way we can gather data is to interview. We can, also, uh, we can also use observation to gather data. In that case, when we do that, we are combining two different research methods under qualitative uh, methodology to be able to gather the data. And we can say that we are triangulating by what? By method not by methodology, but if we combine uh, a qualitative methodology and a quantitative methodology, then it means we are triangulating by what, by, in terms of what, the methodology. And it is often said that one of the best ways to triangulate qualitative and quantitative methods is to involve multiple researchers who have the required expertise. Uh, because one may, though people may have expertise in both uh, research methodologies, it is, it is good if uh, in order to triangulate, especially in a large study, to triangulate by using people who have expertise, uh, very much expertise in qualitative research and then very much expertise in what quantitative research methods we're able to carry out uh, a study. Okay. Now, according to Esther B and his colleagues, they argue that four things combined to make business and management research a distinct focus for, for us as business students. And they say that the way in which managers and researchers draw on knowledge developed by other disciplines. Then the second is that the fact that managers tend to be powerful and busy people, therefore, they are unlikely to allow research access, uh, unlikely to allow research access unless they can see personal or commercial advantages. And then um, the fact that managers are educated, many now have undergraduate and postgraduate degrees and as such tend often to be as well educated as those conducting research about them. 
So th th these are just some uh, important points we may need to note in terms of what the nature and uh, the nature of business and, and management research. Okay, still on the nature of business and management research. Uh, one other critical feature of uh, uh, business and management research is that it is transdisciplinary in nature. And when we say it's transdisciplinary in nature, basically what it means is that it uses knowledge from other disciplines. It also emphasizes that research cannot be reduced to any sum of past frame in terms of contributions to associated disciplines as indicated by Tranfel and Starkey. In other words, basically we are saying that using knowledge from a range of disciplines enables management research to gain new knowledge, new insights that cannot be obtained through all of these disciplines separately, except that when we combine them, we are able to do that. And when we do that, for instance, in the past decade, the debate about the nature of management research has focused on how it can meet what we refer to as a double header of being both theoretically and methodologically rigorous, whilst at the same time, embracing the world of practice and being of practical rele relevance. Now, when we, are con when we are doing research, we can classify our research in terms of two uh, uh, main separate categories, in terms of whether it is what basic research or it is applied research. To understand this clearly, we we'll look at the two sides of the, the two extremes of the continuum. For instance, basic research, basically, the main purpose is to expand knowledge of processes of business and management. Another purpose is that results, it results in the universal principles relating to the process and its relationship to outcomes. But what context can business uh, basic research be conducted? It is usually conducted or undertaken by people based in universities, and the choice of topic and objectives are usually determined by the researcher and the time scales for the uh, production of his output is usually flexible. Now, when we come to apply research, the main purpose is that it improves our understanding of particular business or management problem, just like uh, basic research. It results in solution to a problem. It results in the generation of new knowledge to a limited problem. And the context, the context is that it's usually undertaken by people based in a variety of settings, not only in universities. And the settings may include organizations and what and universities. Also, the objectives are negotiated with the originator, and the time scales are not very flexible but very what very tight. Okay, so that is about basic and uh, and applied research. Uh, the next part of our uh, first lecture is to briefly go through the research process, and the research process is what is going to guide the overall uh, lecture. So the research process usually starts with one's wish or intention to conduct research. After that, one should be able to formulate and clarify one's research topic. After clarifying, formulating and clarifying your research topic, you need to do what? Critically review the literature to identify the gaps that you need to fill. You should also be able to, in the next step understand your philosophy what are the philosophical assumptions that guide or underpin your research this is what we refer to as the research paradigm after that you should be able to formulate your research design so your research philosophy or paradigm is what would be the foundation of what your research uh, uh, design so your philosophy will determine the sort of methodology or methods you should use when you have determined your research design, you should be able to understand how you are going to negotiate access and gain access and gain access to your research participants or access to the research organization. This is also where you look at ethical issues in terms of your research, ethical issues in terms of dealing with the participants, ethical issues in terms of having access to the organization, interacting with people in there, and then how you deal with what the data you would be gathering. The next stage is much more broader. This is where you plan your data collection and collect your data using one or more of several different strategies. This is also the stage where you look at the issues of sampling, the secondary data you will use, the primary data you will gather in terms of what 
observation in terms of interviews which may be semi-structured or, or, or you may use questionnaires. After you have gathered your data, the next step will be to analyze your data using one or both, uh, one of several strategies. Then you can use quantitative methods to analyze your data. You can also use qualitative methods. In terms of what we are currently concentrating on, you will be using what? Qualitative methods. When you have analyzed your data, then you will need to write your project report or your dissertation. Now, you will see that some of the arrows go into each other, come back out and go into the other. It tells you that the research process is what? An iterative process. It is a back and forth process. When all of this is done, it will lead to your submission, the submission of your what? Your dissertation or project report. So, in the subsequent lectures, we are going to be looking at how the next uh, lecture would be about how one can formulate and clarify a research topic. And this will be followed by a topic on literature review, a topic on what? Research philosophy, a topic on uh, research design, uh, gaining access, research uh, data analysis, and what have you. So we'll now take each of these one after the other and delve much more deeper into it. This brings us to the end of the, the first lecture. And if you have any questions or clarifications, I would refer. I would. I would advise that you refer to the study materials, the books I have indicated, and read widely about it. You can also ask me questions on the WhatsApp platform that we are all on. Thank you very much.